and out of nowhere, Red Dragon Resonators takes down this event. We have some more post Age of Overlord goodness for you. Make sure you guys smash that and crap out of that subscribe button. And remember, Kong's cards out here. You can use discount code MCO40. Get the chance to use it on any of the future pre sales that will be coming down the pipeline here. If you need something, I do highly recommend giving them a nice little check out. I'll leave a link down below. And of course, they've been doing these fantastic tournament series that we've been covering out here for everybody as well. So, your breakdown for this event, um, post Age of Overlord here, we have the Crimson Dragon structure deck taking off into this event as well. I know a lot of people uh, kind of forgot about that. But your highest represented deck in this event was actually Tier Elements, of all things. And I, uh, I know that everybody's like, really, Tier? Well, it is a deck that people have genuinely been enjoying as of late. Like, I don't want to put anybody down out here, but, you know, they can play what they want to play, <laughs> you know? The combo variant, it, it gets people's brains thinking. I, I can understand why people still love Tier Elements so much. Winning the event was Resonator Red Dragon here, and if you've been looking at all the crazy little replays we had throughout the week, I really do hope that you've enjoyed watching this deck do its thing, because it is very, very solid. Uh, we also had one branded duelist stepping up to the plate, which I'm not all that surprised to see that that deck is still doing well. Uh, we had Flanderies and Pen back at it again. Let me tell you, man, the deck is incredibly scary when it wants to be. We had some Dragon Link for you as well, so Fusion Destiny good stuff is evolving. Uh, we also have Math Mech and even Infernoble for you as well. You know, for for a top cut here, and we're still in the very early stages of you know analyzing this format, but I will say that this is actually pretty cool. You have a lot of different builds and things that people are bringing to the table, and they're exploring different options. And we don't have to worry about cash tier, you know, besides the little fender. Let's pass on over to those deck lists. Ending our event here was Red Dragon Archfiend Turbo, and uh, they are playing the one obsessive Oovaloop. I cannot tell you that we, I was, we, we were joking about this card all week, and all of a sudden it's one of the best cards that this entire deck had to offer. And we're also playing the one Red Familiar in here as well. And I also see that we are getting some value down here with the Red Rain post side decking as well. I think a lot of people might underestimate this card, but this is actually kind of strong, you know, especially if you can thrust on into the Red Rain. Um, you've also get some value down here from Curry Belt. Thank you, TCG exclusives. Actually being relevant cards, a level seven Dark Synchro, let you target a card on the field and destroy it, uh, which is actually pretty good. Um, outside of that, I mean, this deck, watching this thing play, I loved this. All right. I, uh, I don't think a lot of people have really considered how crazy lines of play you can actually do with this pile. Next up here, our second place list was Infernoble. And, you know, Angel Ring, yet again, showing up here and just proving to us that the one equip matters all that much at the end of the day. The fact that this deck gets so much value off of this, it's amazingly crazy. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, we also have Drill Swarms for defensive options. You have the Drills for defensive, um, the Nibiru, and then of course Exceed Encores back here for purely. I, looking at this, I don't see anything too crazy down here in the extra deck. I mean, we're still making a Dempsey when we really need to. I see that majority of the extra deck looks fine. The only real thing that you might want to see might be a Doomsday Star, depending on, you know, the matchup. But I feel like this build is pretty much perfect, especially if they've got it down to 40 cards. Those are the types of builds that feel like they've been so perfected that you just don't want to do anything to kind of ruin it. All right, it's perfect. All right, we have Math Mech for you here. And you know what? I will say the more I look at these Math Mech decks, the more that I feel like, you know, they're 100% figured out. I do like the fact that we are citing in the Baguski here. Um, if something goes horribly wrong, we just board this in and proceed to laugh at the opponent. Checkmate. Um, and then, of course, I mean, you are always playing the one Ling Rebo for the Nightmare Corruptor, I believe. It's also Cybers, I know. All right, chill. Our bridge cap target for this very good card is fine. Uh, we are main decking one Kurikara for the tr hand trap lineup, which is fine. 
It's also another bridge target if need be. We're also playing only one Saki Tama. I also think that this is fine. You just need this to come down as an additional level four so you can effectively start to play the game. Outside of that, everything looks fine. I love what I'm seeing here. Um, this deck, absolutely amazing. So kudos. Um, nothing, yeah, nothing really too much to change here. All right, we have Dragon Link with Diabella Star this time. We've made it to 45 cards. Okay, I will say that this is actually kind of nice to see that the Diabella Star package is putting a little bit more value into this deck. Um, also, you know, with the Jet Synchron here, um, just a free little tuner monster to go ahead and put on the field, uh, it means that you can make the Ravenous Crocosaur here, which, you know, you might not consider that something relevant, but it actually does come up. We do board in skill drains here so that we can put that defensive pressure on the opponent so that we can do our thing. Um, outside of that, the Fusion Destiny package might be something that a few people might look at and be like, I don't really want to play this, but it does give the deck some recovery. And also, I mean, if you top deck something, you know, particularly terrible or something decent that you need to be able to summon off of the dasher draw for a turn, you know what? You, you have the ability to do that. Um, outside of that, I like this list a lot. All right. We have some tier elements for you back here today. And, uh, you know, you might have seen a very similar build to this, if not this exact same build in another video recently from me. Um, but I want to say the duelist that has been piloting this, um, I feel like they've, they've figured out what they want to do with this deck. All right, the ratios feel very optimized. It feels like, at the end of the day, they have the right idea for what they want to do with this. And I'm not saying that this is the best tier build out there, but for the amount of time and effort that I've seen them play in these tournaments and the amount of development that we have seen from this duelist that have been playing this, I, th I think they're pretty happy with this. I mean, at least they have the Nightmare Corruptor Ibley out. So... I don't know. I, I just wanted to point that out, that while this might not be the most optimized list for somebody else, for them, they are very happy with it. And it's amazing just to see them consistently pile driving through the meta. All right. We have, hi, Brandon. Wow, this, this looks very copy and paste. Um, I'm not all that surprised here. Uh, we have some crossout designators. You do want to make sure that you are getting the chance to resolve this card. As much as I, I point and laugh at Brandon, Ha 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 ha! You need this card to resolve, and trust me, the amount of Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs that I always bring this up, you, you need this to go off. Uh, one Thrust, One Talents, I think, is also fine. Um, super Polys here to make sure that you know you can clean up a board. Citing the Guru is kind of interesting. Um, I I do understand that, like, man, this is this is jam packed in here, especially since we're main decking effectively the gimmick puppet package here to make sure that you can hand it to your opponent off the Sanctifier. Um, I have, yeah, there's nothing else to really say about this. List feels pretty interesting. I do like the fact that this deck does get the chance to play Shifter. Yeah, I know, right? Of all things, this deck playing Shifter. Yeah, different times. Hey, we have some Flanderies back here. Hi, Pen. how are you? Uh, the biggest things that I straight see down here are, we're playing Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries in the side deck. And you have every meta deck in the room down here in this thing that you are aiming to take out, which is hilarious, by the way. If you are worried about something, it's it's checkmateable with this. That is that is definitely something interesting. Uh, you're also getting the chance to see Ultimate Slayer here actually do some work as well. You still do see Thrust, um, seeing Toggle on into the Harpy's Featherstorm if you need be. I mean, we've come a long way in terms of the degeneracy. I also have liked the fact that these decks have been playing, like, one pot of extravagance. You know, you do have effectively seven cards here to be able to filter slash access different things so you can play the game. So don't underestimate maybe what a splash pot of extravagance can actually get you in this deck, because this can go a long way. Also, shout out to Dimension Shifter up here. All right, we also have more tier elements for you. And I do see some pretty interesting differences here. I see we have double grief in the main deck. We are side decking a Shekinaga with triple copies of the Shadal Fusion. So you can basically just go ahead and, you know, slam this down. You get access to your Shadal package, and then you can just laugh all the way to the bank with Shekinaga, depending on um, what you need to do. I mean, obviously getting the chance to drop one of these stupid good cards to set up the milling. Absolutely amazing, especially for going second options. Good stuff. 
So that is our breakdown for this Kong's Cards Tournament event. And what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.